Hello, my name is Stanford Gibson. I am the Sediment Transport Specialist on the HC RAS team. And this is the second part in a two-part series about viewing sediment data with the new 1D sediment plotter in 6.0. If you haven't seen the first one, where we talk about time series plots and profile plots and lots of things you can do with plotting those and colors and monochromes and things like that. So go back and see that one if you haven't seen it. But here we're going to talk about some of the more specialized visualizations that you can do. So for this video, I'm still using one of the example data sets that comes with the model. Here I'm using the dredge channel data set. So just to kind of familiarize you with this model, I'm going to turn on the invert elevation and the water surface. Now we have a whole video on dredge modeling that uses this model, if you're kind of interested in that kind of work. Um, but what you're looking at here is, you know, we've got flow in the upstream end. This is the kind of historic river channel. And then this is the navigation channel. So this is regularly dredged. What we're gonna do is we're going to simulate a year of deposition in this channel. And so you can see here, this is October 1, 1996. We have calibration data for these dates. And we're gonna to go to September 29th, 1997. And look what happens. And you see we get really substantial deposition through this channel. We get nothing up here because I've actually fixed that with pass-through nodes. And so you're going to see no bed change up here because we've asked for no bed change. But then we get se severe deposition downstream here. And because of the monochrome presentation, we could turn on several of them and see how deposition happens over time. And you can see that you know, as you go from the lighter to the darker, um, what happens with your deposition. But we're just gonna look at the final here and the initial so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so the other video what, though was about this time series and profile plot. We're gonna look at these other four ways of visualizing sediment data. And the first one is going to be the cross section. And so which cross section do we wanna look at? Well, these will not be interesting. And so let's look at these. And how do we know what cross section that is? Well, we're gonna look down at the bottom there and we know that's cross section 28429. And so let's do that. We'll choose cross section and we'll go to 28429. And then we want to look at that at the beginning and at the end. And let's look at it at a couple of times in between. You'll notice we have fewer cross sections than we have profiles because we've asked for fewer cross sections than profiles. It's a lot of data. And so what you can see is, again, we're using the monochrome to look at you know what was the initial to the final. You can also just turn on multiple cross sections and you could look at multiple cross sections at the same time. And so this gets really busy really quickly. Um, or what you could do is look at the beginning um, cross section for both. And then I can turn that off and I can look at the ending cross section for both. And I could look at the ending cross section for several cross sections from upstream to downstream. And you'll see that what we're doing here is we're using the monochrome to show different times and we're using different colors to show different locations. But you can actually switch that around. If what you really want to look, use the monochrome to do is help you differentiate um, different locations because you can't really tell just by looking at these, you can go to plot options and you can say, hey, how do you want to use the cross-section color ramp? Do you want it to be a temporal monochrome color ramp or do you want it to be longitudinal? Well, if we choose longitudinal, now you'll be able to see these plotted from upstream to downstream, where the darker is upstream and the lighter is downstream. But generally what we're going to want to do is look at one cross-section over time. So we'll use the monochrome to represent time. Okay, so that's actually pretty straightforward and actually pretty important because it's always good to actually go look at how your cross sections have changed and to make sure they're changing the way that you expect them to change. If you just look at the mass change and don't look at kind of some of the weird things that can happen to cross sections, your model can actually end up with some problematic things going on at the cross section scale. All right, so then the next thing that we're gonna look at are these GC percentages. Um, and all that is is if they're grain class percentage plots. And so let's take a look at one of these and see, see what it does. And here we're just going to look at cross section 529, 526, because I know that that's fun. Then you'll notice that not all the variables are available when you go to grain class percentage. It's just the variables that have grain classes, because we're going to break it down by percentages. So I'm going to choose volume out. 
And what the volume out does is it shows you kind of the flux out in, um, of each control volume. Essentially, each cross section is control volume that has a flux in and a flux out by grain class. And so what you're looking at here is the sediment kind of leaving each grain class um, by the relative fraction. On this part is percentage, and you'll see that you know the grays are silts and the browns are sand and so we're down in the part of the channel where all the sand is deposited out and so all we have is silt and clay flux and then what this green line shows you is the total what's the total flux out and as you see this is an event right here because you've got a high total flux out and the, these events actually don't change the flux distribution at this location very much um, and so that's a, a pretty interesting way to look at it you could also look at the volume bed change cumulative at that cross section. And so what you can see is, you know, the the obviously the mass is increasing over time. That's what that purple line is. But, you know, after you get a little bit of like perturbation in that large event at the beginning, um, you get very little change in the relative mass of the deposition. It's not like that this deposit is coarsening or fining over time. All right. And so that's interesting, but it's not as interesting as switching to the grain class percent profile. The grain class percent profile is a much more interesting plot. And so here, you're gonna choose a profile. I'm gonna start with just a random profile in the middle. And now I'm gonna look at the volume out. Except I'm gonna look at the volume out cumulative to kind of integrate it over time. And now this is a much more interesting story because what happens in this model is you've got through these pass-through nodes, whatever's coming into the model gets translated downstream, and that's fine. But what happens next is that you start depositing the material and you start depositing the coarser material. So this total volume out drops from upstream to downstream. And you can see that the sand drops out first. There's almost none of it um, downstream of that transition. And then the coarse silts deposit out until you get to the bottom here and you're at 65% clay, whereas the boundary condition is 38% clay. And so you can see how the flux transitions downstream as you deposit, or you can look at the opposite. You can say, hey, I wanna actually look at the cumulative bed change. And let's actually turn that on for the final so we can kind of see what's the, what's the bed change you know, over time. Now, um, this blanks out in the upstream half because these are pass-through nodes, so there actually is no bed change. So let's actually zoom in, and if you, to zoom in in these plots, you can just select, you know, press down the the left click, and uh, and select a range. And so what you can see immediately is that all of the sand deposits out in these upstream cross sections. That's where the the sand bed change happens. The red line is the total bed change volume at each cross section and then the distribution. And so you can see that as you move from upstream to downstream, you move from more of these coarser grain classes, the sands and the coarse silts, down to, you know, by the time you get to the bottom down there, there's almost no coarse silt and it's mostly medium silt. And there's just a little, even though most of your flux was clay and you deposit kind of more and more clay as you move downstream, you really don't deposit much clay total. The, most of the clay is passed through load. Now, occasionally you'll see these little negatives, these little blips, and that's because if you're looking at the volume of the of bed change, this is a depositional model, so mainly we're showing you the gradational percentage of your deposition. But in some cases, you're actually, you're gonna have time steps of erosion. And so if you have time steps of erosion, you can see that the erosion here is mostly sand. And so in some cases, you'll actually have, uh, you know, a lot of stuff above the line, which shows you the gradation of your deposition, and a lot of stuff below the line that shows you the gradation of your erosion. And that can be really helpful in those cases, but really what this is designed for is like a, a, a reservoir depositional model where you're coarsening, where, you, where you're fining from upstream to downstream, you're dropping off most of your sand. You know, we can zoom in to the upstream part of this model and look at how all the sand deposits up there. But let's say that I'm gonna go with the full plot and then I'm gonna zoom in on the section we're most interested in. And let's say we actually wanna change the colors. Um, and this is not just for the grain class profile, but we've chosen this color ramp where um, this is actually just my favorite color ramp for, for visualizing gradations. And clay is black 
and then your silt grain classes are gray with the finer ones being light and the coarser ones being dark your sands are brown again lighter to darker for, from finer to coarser and then your gravels are blue and your cobbles and boulders are green and so i think that's really intuitive but not everyone maybe wants to do that and so if you want to edit those you can go to options plot options and you can go to layers and you can go to your volume bed change and what you'll see is that up here is actually very similar to your linear variables to your vector variables now we can go in here and we can change that color or in this case if i wanted to make it transparent i can go in here and give them zero alphas and now it's transparent and then you can mess around with any grain class um, color ramp you want. We have two by default. We have the standard default, and then we have one that was provided to us by the Walla Walla District. Um, Mitch Price has a, a grain class color ramp that's slightly different than mine that he likes, so we put it in there because uh, Mitch does a lot of work with us. Let's say you want, you want to make your own color ramp. You can go in it here and you can change these colors anywhere you want. If you want to change a color, you just click on it and you say, hey, we're going to change that color. And then we'll let you change that color to anything you want. Let's say actually this fine silt, and of course in RAS, M stands for silt um, because you can't have S for both silt and sand. And M is apparently a, the Swedish word for silt starts with M. And so let's say that you want fine silt, that actually that, that is a, a grain class that is associated with contaminants. So we're going to go and just make that red and we'll say okay and now that grain class is red and now we'll apply you know we've got our sand deposition up here but then the actual silt grain class that we're interested in um, pops in our visualization so then the last option is the rating curve and for the rating curve you'll see we have a little bit of a different behavior here you get one x variable and so a very classic x variable obviously is flow and so we'll keep that as our x variable but then you can have as many y variables as you want and so first you're going to have to go choose a cross section so let's choose a random cross section here and then you know what's the thing that cor most likely correlates with flow well water surface is going to correlate with flow and so there you, know, you have this is the a standard flow stage rating curve but there are lots of things that correlate with flow in sediment transport you can look at sediment concentration and there we have our flow concentration rating curve um, which is actually one of the calibration variables um, often you want to look at your flow versus your concentration and plot it against actual measured concentration flow data or you can change your dependent variable and say let, let's say our dependent variable is actually going to be shear stress and then we'll look at shear stress versus sediment concentration and we get you know a different relationship but still you know a pretty strong relationship and so this is the way you can look at two variables at the same time and of course you could do multiple you could look at shear stress versus concentration and water surface elevation and you know add as many of these as you like some of these will make more sense than others shear stress versus invert change not so interesting right because this is really a, a fall velocity model and so that's the way you can plot, you know, different sediment variables or different against each other or plot sediment variables against hydraulic variables, variables. And of course, you can go get these data, drop them in Excel, plot them against your observed data. We're adding functionality where you can do that all internally in RAS right now. But for now, if you want to do a rating curve analysis, a rating curve calibration, you can do that outside of the model. All right, so those are some of the new plotting features in HCC RAS for 1D sediment. Feel free to explore and mess around with them, and we'll be adding more um, by the time we release 6.1. Most of this work was done by Zach Morris, who is a coder on the HTC RAS team. He is in charge of the RAS plotter and all of these capabilities. And this video was funded by the Regional Sediment Management Research Project, which is doing a series of these videos to help you know, introduce best modeling practices for sediment transport modeling.